have uh, some breaking news for you. A jet carrying a three-time champion Russian ice hockey team has crashed near the runway in the town of Yaroslavl. It's 270 kilometers northeast of Moscow. Now, the latest information that we're getting is that there are only two survivors among the 42 people who were on board. Well, we do have a correspondent uh, in Yaroslavl, Nisa Nawe, for us, but uh, we're still trying to uh, establish, establish connection. In the meantime, uh, let's cross over to... Uh, my colleague here, uh, Kate Partridge, is with me. Uh, this is certainly not good news. It's certainly bad news for the sporting world. What can you tell us about the team that was on board? It's, uh, as we know, it's a Yaroslav Lokomotiv team. As, as far as we know, yes, it's Yaroslav Lokomotiv, the team, which is a powerhouse from the KHL, from the Continental Hockey League. And from what we gather, it's their team plane that was taking off from their local airport. It was flying to the Belarusian capital of Minsk to play Dynamo Minsk in one of their opening games of the season, which was tomorrow. Actually, the opening game of the KHL today, which was between the champions, Salavats Yulayev and runners-up last year, Atlanta, has now been postponed, obviously, in the light of what's happened. From what we gather, as you said, 40 from 42 people are reported dead. Uh, we, the information we have, it was the first choice team. Well, obviously we don't have names, but we, we do have an idea that probably there may be among eight different nationalities, international players amongst that team that, that was on board. And the youngest was 20, uh, as we hear. The latest yeah. reports we're getting was the youngest player was, was 20 years old. Okay, days. but this isn't really the first, uh, such a, it's, it's a tragedy. It isn't the first in the sporting world, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. We've managed to look through, I mean, there are some unfortunately famous incidents of air crashes that have decimated football teams. The most famous one that comes to mind as a football reporter was for me was for Manchester United in 1958 with the Busby Babes coming back from a European, European game and that's where eight, eight tragically young players died and the, the, the coach was injured and then survived and then you have the story of Munich and the Busby Babes after that. We managed to, looking through our information, we found 11, 11 different plane crashes. I mean the famous ones there, Turin in 1949, the Turin Football Club. We have in 1993 the Zambian national football team that was also involved in, a, in unfortunately in a plane crash we have the u.s olympic figure skating team from 1961 so 11 crashes all with obviously devastating effects all right all right thanks uh, very much uh, for that update kate i think we've established a connection with our correspondent anisa nawa who is in yaroslavo for us uh, anisa if you can hear me uh, what can you tell us about what happened uh, well, we've just got to about a kilometer away from the crash, but you can probably hear the ambulances and fire trucks making their way uh, to where it happened, just outside of Yaroslavl, where this um, international global policy forum is taking place. The numbers are moving very fast. The latest we have uh, is that 42 were on board, 40 are dead, uh, some 26 bodies have already been recovered, and in fact, uh, the latest numbers have us with two survivors. One of them, uh, Alexander Gadimov, who is already in hospital. He's in critical condition. He's a member, of course, of the Russian national hockey team. He is believed uh, to be one of the survivors. It's not yet confirmed who the other is, but like I said, two survivors so far uh, in, in, in what looks like it's going to be a horrible tragedy, not just because of, of, of the crash, but, but for this hockey team. Of course, the Lokomotiv uh, hockey team, uh, three three-time world champions. I heard you speaking to, I think, Kate there, uh, who, who probably talked a lot about the significance of this and of their work. They were flying to Minsk uh, to play against Dynamo there. Uh, we know that a part of the fuselage, we're being told, uh, has been found in the Volga River, which is not far from Yaroslavl, and, and a piece of the plane. Uh, it's believed that human factor could have played a part in this. This is what experts uh, and, and officials are looking to now, and also technical failure. It was a Yak 42 plane, which uh, is considered to be pretty reliable, but there has been uh, several clash uh, crashes and problems with the plane in the last 10 years or so. So uh, that's probably going to be something that investigators are looking into. It's always, when, when you have crashes like this, uh, human factor is usually the first thing that investigators uh, begin to look into, and, and the people that we've had a chance to speak to here seem to, seem to think that that could have been the problem. Um, I just want to say that we know that foreign nationals were, in fact, on board as well, members of, of the Czech uh, team. We know that Czech hockey player Jan Mark, was, who was on the World Cup winners team last year, uh, was on the plane, and, and, and so far we haven't heard anything about him being a survivor, so it is believed uh, that Jan Mark has in fact died in this crash. Uh, we know that uh, both transport and aviation ministers are on their way to the crash site as we speak. Uh, a minute of silence was held uh, about an hour ago, in fact, just after news of this crash hit the, uh, the Global Policy Forum. 
a minute of silence was held, and we are hearing that President Dmitry Medvedev, who will be making his way to Yaroslav for this forum, will, uh, in fact, come and pay his respects uh, at the site of the crash. Okay, thanks uh, very much for that, Anissa. Certainly can hear the activity uh, in the background. Again, thanks, Anissa Nawe, there live uh, from Yaroslav. Uh, Kate, I just want to go back to you a little bit about uh, the team being there. I mean, there are star favorites there. Well, what kind of reaction are we expecting from the sporting world? I think, I think like, like most of us, actually, complete shock. Uh, as I said, the, the, the fact that tragedies ha have actually happened doesn't diminish the fact that the, the, the devastating they ha effect they have across the sporting world. I mean, what makes it even, even more tragic, apart from the, what appears to be the, the large-scale loss of life, was the fact it was such, a, such an influential team, such an important team. This is the fourth season of the Care Gel. It's the first day of the season, I mean, which, it, which only adds to the tragedy. We, the impact then, obviously, is going to be felt throughout the season. We, they were a powerhouse team. They had been runners-up twice, semi-finalists last year. It's, it, it is total shock. And obviously the initial game that we were going to have today, as I say, between the champions and the runners-up, that was a replay of the final. Yeah, you're right, and impacting the season. So, uh, so how, do, we, do we have any more information or is still we don't have any more about that. What, how it's going to progress? Well, literally, that's all we know so far from the league is that, that they have suspended the first game because the report's just coming through. We don't know yet how it impacts on the schedule or anything else at the moment. All right. Thanks very much for that update. Uh, Kate Partridge uh, there for us. All right. Uh, we will keep you updated, of course, uh, with all the latest developments in Yaroslav as we get them. The uh, plane crash there, the latest being that uh, there are only two survivors among the 42 people who were on board.